Hi everyone, Lloyd Reber here again with part two of our video tutorial of using Excel to compute some descriptive statistics. In part one, we computed the mean and standard deviation from a set of data. Now we continue working with this Excel file in order to convert each raw score into a Z or standard score. Okay, let's get back to it. As you can see, I've opened the Excel file that we used in part one. Obviously, you should do the same. Let's begin by saving our Excel file with a different name. That way, should we make any fatal mistakes along the way, we can always retreat back to the original file and start over. So I'm going to go up to File, choose Save As, and all I'm going to do is change the title from Reber-Descriptive 1 to Reber-Descriptive 2. Click Save. And as you saw, I saved the file in the same folder as the original file. Okay, so we are going to convert all of the raw scores into a z-score. So let's begin by putting a nice label, a lowercase z right there in column E. All right, so maybe we need to remind ourselves what the formula is for z-scores. Once again, I've created a little Word document with the formula there. And as you can see, a z-score is a deviation score, that is a raw score minus the group average, or the group mean, divided by the standard deviation. Obviously, we already have all of this information. So I don't think it's going to be very hard at all to go ahead and compute z-scores. Let's go ahead and do it. So I, again, am in row 11 for student A. We have a formula, so let's begin that with an equal sign. We are going to take a deviation score for student A, which is cell C11 in my spreadsheet, and I'm going to divide, so forward slash, by the standard deviation that I computed in the last video, which is in D26. Press return, and we see we have a z-score of 0 0.97317, and we will round these off later, but obviously that is a positive number, which gives me a clue that student A's score is above the mean, and 34 is above 27.90. Let's look again at that formula and uh, similar to when we were computing the standard deviation, we have two parts to it, but the second part needs to be an absolute reference to the standard deviation in D26. So we know what to do. We're going to put a dollar sign in front of the two elements of that cell reference. Put those in and press return. Now we can use the fill down technique. I'm going to click and hold on that z-score. Again, I'm going to hold as I drag down to the to my last student, student J. Then I will go and choose to fill down. And let's go ahead and do some rounding here. I want to round all of the values in column E. I'll click on the E of column E to select the column. Go up to Format, choose Cells, go to the category number and again two decimal places is just fine. So we know from the presentation that a z-score converts a raw score and takes into account both measures of central tendency and measures of variability. And the resulting z-score is a standard score which is in a unit of standard deviation units. After all we divided by the standard deviation. So if we take a look here, uh, for example, the very first student, student A, uh, has a 0.97. And so it's positive. That tells me it's above the mean. And in fact, if I scan the other z-scores, I can again tell very quickly at a glance which of the student scores are above the mean or below the mean, because if they're above the mean, they're positive numbers. If they're below the mean, they are negative numbers. If we saw a zero, and we don't, um, but a zero would mean it was exactly equal to the mean. And again, they are in standard deviation units. So again, uh, student A 
has a z-score of 0.97. Now, if it was a z-score of 1, it would be exactly one standard deviation unit. So it's just under one standard deviation unit. So what does that mean? Well, the, the mean is 27.90. If you add to that 6.27, you get 34.17. 34 is just below that. Again, z-scores are conversions of the raw score in standard deviation units. Well, let's go ahead and check our work because I think we know some mathematical principles of a set of z-scores. For example, the sum of a set of z-scores must equal zero because of this mathematical balancing. The, the total amount above the mean will offset or balance the total amount below the mean. So if I just go down here right below um, all those z-scores, we can do a copy and paste using the fill right technique. So if I click on the sum of, the, uh, of x squared, I can click, hold, and drag to the right, come up to edit, and choose to fill to the right. And I get a zero. So, so far, so good. And also the second um, way we can check mathematically is whether or not the standard deviation of the z-scores equals 1. So let's do that. So I'm just going to put this in the same row as the other standard deviation that we have and of course in column E underneath all the z-scores. And let's go ahead and use the built-in standard deviation function that Excel has. So uh, recall we hit the equal sign and then start typing STD and we do need to use the standard deviation for a population. We want to be dividing by n. So we'll choose that one. And I'll just finish typing it. Open up the parentheses and we will tell Excel the range. We go to the very first z-score, click, hold, and drag to the last z-score. Then put in your final parentheses. Press return. And again, we have met the two mathematical checks, a sum of zero and a standard deviation of one. So guess what? We're done. That's right. In our last video, in part one, we really did all of the hard work. If I bring up the formula for computing a z-score, we see that, yeah, last time we computed the deviation score for each uh, person and we had computed the standard deviation. So we really had very little to do here. Uh, we had those pieces of data ready to go. And using them in Excel was a piece of cake. Let's be sure to save our file. Okay, this concludes this two-part video tutorial on descriptive statistics. Until next time.